I suppose a lot of my work is about the human condition, and that term is really broad, but about what it is to be alive, you know, and the things you're dealing with. Being happy, being sad, the struggles. I often work on lots of projects at the same time, so I think it's really important to have future projects and visions of things you want to achieve so that you get up and feel excited about those things. If I sit down for too long, then I feel guilty that I'm not making the most of everything I, I'm lucky enough to have. I feel like I'm wasting my time if I'm not doing a hundred things at once. So I'll work on a number of things at any one time and use the same brush and the same colour and the same materials and creating a, uh, a kind of flux by which things happen, often by mistake. Oh, whoops, this painting is dripped on this painting. Oh, but that is interesting because it's pushed it in this direction or you paint over this mistake and it leads to this decision. So that's a big part of my work is allowing mistakes to shine through. I'm constantly trying to discover things and push what I do. And I really hope that that comes across in my work because it should change. I think that every day we change, you know. Every day you wake up, you're a different person. In one way, it's important for me to establish a series of hieroglyphics, vocabulary, symbols that I rely on, like a language. In another way, it's really important for me to reject anything that I ever do so that I do something new. A lot of my work is about the process of play. That is something I feel is really important to hold on to and enjoying something. Not necessarily knowing why you enjoy it, but just it feels right. And just to accept and embrace being a little bit lost in something. If you get lost, you have the chance to discover something. And I think that's possibly the role of art, is to make you look at your own world differently. You know, it's supposed to make you look sideways at what you already know. That's the way I think of it. I try and take things that people already know and give them a little twist and hopefully make them smile.
online. This is BBC Radio 4. The conjuring of the mind is a near impossible task. What happens when we think or feel is not always clear. There are layers. Thoughts collide, overlap, stack upon each other. A song plays in the background. Someone asks you a question. You remember a dream. You forget what you were about to do. This is a very strange and normal process. Each of us navigate this mental space, attempting and assuming the state of an organized mind. We try to control and edit our thoughts. We hide and lie and twist the truth. We suffer depressions and mental deterioration. We learn to meditate, we self-medicate, but it is never one picture, one clear thought, one defining image. I feel it is important to allow this mental process to inform the artistic process, to attempt to mirror the conditions in which ideas occur and develop. Like a magic trick, it is important to never fully reveal how it is done. If you explain a joke, it stops being funny. There should be a secret ingredient, a code to be broken. Sometimes it is important to not fully know why or how something has happened. Some mystery should remain. For me, art is a language for things I don't know how to talk about. You want to stay? Yeah, I think I do. I'm going to you. So, are you filming? Yeah. So, here we are in Turkey at what can only be described as paradise or oh, Babylon. Yeah, Babylon. And then, how many people are coming to the festival? 10,000 people are going to look at this wall. So there's a little bit of pressure. It's got to be okay. It's got to be good. Istanbul is a magical place. I've been here a few times and it never ceases to amaze me how cosmopolitan it is. All right, so I will talk to you a little bit about colour. Colour is something that I feel very strongly about because colour is a is one of the elements of art in a way. It's something that is around us all the time. But there is a science to colour, and certain colours look good next to certain colours, okay? And I do change my colour palette from time to time, but generally I enjoy primary colours because I suppose I enjoy their childlike references from board games to very um, everyday things. So I am here to paint a wall. I'm David Schillinglaw is my name, David Schillinglaw. I'm a painter. I paint big walls sometimes. And this is one of the walls I'm gonna paint. It's big, it's bigger than me. Uh, but yeah, look, so this guy's painting the wall. You're doing a great job. I'm gonna come and help you if you want. And what do I imagine? What do I see on this wall? What is the vision? The vision is a kaleidoscope of love and music, a metaphor for all the pleasures of life uh, erupting from a series of trumpets to symbolize horns and sirens and noises. You okay? Yeah. That's good work, guys. Wait, let me get an Instagram shot of you guys. I'm gonna tag you on MySpace. Inspiration exists, but it must find you hard at work. I think that's a quote by someone like Picasso, and it's true. You've got to, you've got to start doing something, and then you get inspired. You don't just sit there and wait for an idea to happen. Um, and all the time that's changing, you know, just sitting down in a cafe last night, I'm, I'm like drawing something and I hear something or I smell something or I think about something. Anything can inspire, you know, good things, bad things. 
some of the most horrific things going on on planet Earth at the moment really inspire me. They make me want to, they make me want to do things. Um, but also, for me personally, nature. Nature is always the thing I turn to. If I'm ever like lost for what to do, I just look at nature and you see a butterfly or you see a, a flower and you just think, wow, like that's amazing that it's just happening without us. Um, and for me, currently, I draw a lot of my inspiration from the differences and the connections between nature and technology. I'm at the top of the painting, um, but right now I'm trying to mirror up what I did this morning. So I already started that side, and rather than starting that side and moving across, I've done that side, and now I'm doing this side, so creating like symmetry, like some sort of balance. Trying my best to do this as quickly as possible, but without rushing it, because if I do it too quickly, it won't it won't be very good. But it's such a big wall that it's, it's hard to not be pressurised with the sun and the lot of distractions. It's quite hard to focus. About what's the difference between painting and graffiti? Well, as I understand it, graffiti uh, means writing your name on a wall. I might be wrong, but I think the Latin for writing is graph. So it probably derives from Latin for writing. Uh, this isn't graffiti. In fact, there's no writing in it, it's just pictures. Technically, I would say this is a mural, but I generally don't I'm not sure actually that's interesting when does a painting become a mural does the size dictate that well this is a big painting anyway it's on a wall it's taken us two days which is quite miraculous it's not finished yet it's confusing because of this this is spray paint and when people see people using spray paint people think it's graffiti but it's not but it could be but it's not So yeah, Istanbul, difficult to define a city, especially if you've only been there for a few days, but I feel like there's something here for everyone. We're at the seaside, I don't know the name of the place, but we're at Babylon Festival, Sound Garden Festival, and it's really nice. It, I don't feel like we're anywhere near a city. I feel like we're in a, a little pocket of paradise. So yeah, this is the wall that I have painted with the help of my beautiful assistants and uh, I'm amazed that we've got it done.
check it. part of my brain that isn't active all the time. I'm, I'm reading road signs in Greek and I'm trying to navigate a, a new metro system. So y you open your mind to, it's like your senses are heightened when you're in a new environment. And I believe you become a product of your environment. And sometimes the environment becomes a product of you because if you're a, an artist working in the street, you start to respond to the environment. You, you, if someone says paint that wall, you start to look at the painting in terms of the wall. There's a window there, there's a drain pipe. So I, I'm painting the picture on the wall, yeah, but the wall is really in charge. So it's like that where you go to a city, like I'm trying to do something in the city, but the city's in charge. So it starts to become a relationship between you and a place, and you and the people that you meet, and all of those things feed into your work, like an overheard conversation or a word that you don't understand this is my attempt to crystallise that, that experience. Drawing and painting is really the only thing that keeps me totally occupied. Um, I get really impatient with things and I get really... Um, lose interest in things if they're not holding my attention. And for some reason, the process of drawing on paper or painting with a brush or painting a wall with spray can, I'm just like, Shh, all day long. I don't get bored. It never stops becoming exciting. I remember being really young and, and really falling in love with the ideas of, of Picasso and, and Dali and Rauschenberg and these things. They, they, just from a very early age, I was like, I want to know about that. I, I want to know how and why that's possible. 
And I think art's really, really important. At a very early age, you try and identify yourself with things. So identity is at the very root of my work, my identity. And a lot of my work is about me. In a, in a, in a way, it's like selfish expressionism. It's just a, a map of where I've been, yeah? And if that's a drawing of a face, there's still a map of where I've been, like my diary. But if it's a map of a city, it's where I've been geographically. And it deals with that space between ge geographical and a mental states, like um, psychogeography is a term that I, I, I quite enjoy because it deals with that kind of emotional response to a place.
yesterday when I got in the shower at my girlfriend's. <laughs> Her cat had done a shit in the bath. <laughs> It's got a cat litter tray, and nine out of ten days it does a shit in the cat litter tray. And then every tenth day it thinks, nah, no, I'm gonna do shit in the bath. I flew here in a big metal aeroplane. A big metal bird picked me up with its metal beak and dropped me in Copenhagen. Are you worth pretty lies? Like the My name is David Schilling Law and I am in what can only be described as the beautiful Danish countryside. Whispered words, soft and low. The idea of the project is beyond me. It's beautiful. We take one artist from this place, send them to this place, and just encourage them to continue doing what they love doing, ultimately creating something that will be printed and then sold in order to pay for the trip. So that in itself is this beautiful kind of I don't know, the gift that keeps giving and I get to do what I love and other people get to enjoy it. Everyone enjoys it. It feels, I wish I was here for a month, to be honest. This is what I'd like to do for the rest of my life. I'm gonna make things in a secret location in the middle of the woods, near the sea. I'm here for a few days to make drawings and objects which I, I haven't even imagined yet. I want to draw a map so that I can find myself when I get lost and just try and enjoy this beautiful scenery. Nature, that is the key word because that is something that really inspires me. That, that thing, what inspires you? I really am inspired by nature. So I, I want to use the fact that I'm in the middle of the woods in a summer house and it's made of wood. It's all made by hand. It's in the middle of the woods. There's, there's animals, there's plants. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna try and illustrate that and maybe even work with things I find. Some pine cone type seed pod sculptures. I wanna be cradled in the beautiful green fingers of mother nature and let her massage my brain with her greeny fingertips. The place was like a strange, humble utopia in the middle of the woods, half a mile from the ocean, and at night you can hear the ocean crashing 
and it was blissful, beautiful. I had really amazing time, just it settled my soul, settled the dust of my soul. Really helped actually to be without internet and be without technology and to be surrounded by wood and nature. Just before I left my studio, I um, grabbed some watercolour paints, which I haven't used for ages, but I just thought, oh, that will fit in my bag. And I made a lot of paintings with watercolour, which is a completely different way of painting. And I was responding to nature because that is really all that was sur surrounding me. Plants, trees, animals, butterflies. I became a bit of a hippie for four days. Everything is has the potential to inspire you, good things and bad things. But traveling definitely inspires me because as soon as you're in a foreign environment and you're reading road signs that you don't understand or you're having to navigate your way through a city, immediately you're looking at things in a new way. And traveling definitely inspires me because you're out of your comfort zone. So you are responding to new things and that encourages new ideas and new approaches. This project is amazing in its simple concept and like that is a very simple idea i think it's very clever because it kind of has endless potential you know because each artist is going to respond to a new place in a different way really i was submerged in nature so surrounded by trees the beach finding pebbles really sort of looking at objects and colors and light and simplifying the way i work and my ideas and really just learning to draw again actually. I love drawing. I think drawing really, I consider that I'm a painter or an artist. I make objects, I do all kinds of things, but really drawing is the root of everything I do. You know, I'm happiest with a pen or pencil and a piece of paper. And this project gave me the opportunity to really focus on that love for drawing and, and watercolour, so sort of drawing with paint and paper, I bought some really, really lovely paper with me and it just was a, a joy to work with those basic, basic materials and respond to things that I kind of know already, but looking at them with a fresh light. Actually, a lot of the work I made was pushing towards abstraction, which I kind of battle with because I love abstraction, but I always feel the need to have a root symbol or anchor like a, something that is recognizable and actually this trip has allowed me to possibly lean towards abstraction with more confidence. <laughs>